Hi, this is Alan Gleason for ADSR. Please subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel for further updates. I'll dial in some settings, say we're on our membrane sound, which you would think would be the ideal setting for a drum sound, but a lot of the other resonator types are equally capable of producing something that resembles a kick drum and are worth exploring. But we'll start off on this one. So, so by reducing the material, I'm not having the lower frequency content to have a longer decay. And I'll adjust the brightness to bring the focus into the lower frequencies. So there's quite a bit of noise or exciter in the in the result there. So I'll pull down the bleed so that the mallet is not bleeding through the sound as much. I could also adjust the color. So we've got a kick drum of sorts there. If I was to say group this instrument and if I wanted to combine this with another sound, say if I went to my library and went to say somewhere where I had some drum essentials, and I'll bring in some samples say, and let me see, yeah, I'll go into drums, call up a kick drum, go for something more classic like a, a maybe like an 808, yeah. Drop that in there. And because I'm playing C1 here, if I play this by itself, will be very low down so I'll just convert that into sampler and type in 36 there to get that to C1 so that's the 808 and that's it combined with our collision sound so if this was going to be a composite sound I can go back in here maybe tune the membrane if you didn't like that white noise kind of sound that's bleeding through I could maybe adjust the color or the actual level there if I wanted more high frequency content to the membrane I could bring up my brightness So we're creating a hybrid sound there between the 808 kick drum and our collision sound. So I'll just turn off the 808 sound and I'll go back to our collision sound. So if you were using this by itself, obviously that sound is not appropriate. So let's switch over into some of the other resonators and see what they can offer. So say something like say the marimba, typically more of a, a wooden type timbre to it. Obviously I don't need this, this high frequency content up here if I wanted to do something like a kick drum. So by bringing down the brightness here, I'm reducing the energy in the higher frequencies. And by bringing down harmonics, I'm compressing the partials that are actually being used. So you can hear the frequency content coming down. So obviously that's still a bit too high. So I'm gonna tune the sound down. Just looking at the fundamental here, it's around a0, maybe 57 hertz, that's okay. Maybe it's a bit too much decay to the sound. It's good there. The other thing that we can look at doing is introducing a pitch envelope. So if you've spent any time designing kick drum sounds or reading about how to create them, a pitch envelope is an essential part of the process. So we don't have a dedicated pitch envelope here, we've just got two controls. One is to set the amount of pitch variation, positive or negative. And the other setting here is the glide or decay time from the pitch offset. So if I turn this up all the way and set this to a very long setting, and just add more decay in here so we can we can actually hear it clear. So you can both hear and see the decay happening there. So obviously with a kick drum we'll want something more snappy. So I'll just bring the overall decay down. Still see the decay there, maybe make it a bit more snappy. So we're just getting a slight pitch drop there in the sound. 
The other way to introduce a pitch offset, something similar to the pitch envelope, is to use modulation within collision. So if we go into my LFO section, this is similar to the LFO that you might see in the sampler device, where you've got your LFO section at the top, and then below it, you've got two destinations that you can set for each LFO. So you've got two LFOs. So for my destination here, I might set, say, the resonator one pitch. I'll turn on the LFO and I'll set it to saw drop. Set it to 100%. So I'll reset our pitch envelope, so we're just hearing the effect of the LFO. The depth all the way up. So when you dial this into taste. And just the rate. If just the rate too high, you'll hear a wobble come into the sound. There. So you could use that as an effect if you wanted it to be in time with your music. But I just want a pitch drop here. So I'll dial it in so I don't hear the repeat kicking in. Also affected by your amount of decay that you're using on the sound. So we're more in the kick drum territory there now. The final resonator that I'll look at is the last two in the list. This is pipe and tube, and they share similar characteristics. So now when I trigger the sound, you can hear something that's more like a pipe, or if I put it onto tube, it has a slightly different quality. So I can adjust the decay, and I can adjust the radius. So you have more limited sound design options with this, but still capable of producing something useful. So when I got the decay too long there, you can hear the LFO coming in. So I'm actually just going to turn that off for now. The other type of exciter that you have is a noise generator. Now this would simulate something more like, say, blowing or wind excitement to an instrument. But depending on the envelope and filter settings that you use, it can also add some excitement to the sound. So if you wanted to add more, say, attack to the actual noise to the, of the instrument, adjusting the filter there and adding some resonance you can hear a kind of like you know chiff kind of sound coming into it if i adjust the envelope i've got an adsr envelope at the bottom here we have more control over the sound than we do with the noise of the other exciter obviously so for something like a kick drum we might just add in a bit of additional attack to the sound. Maybe there's a bit too much decay in there. With each of these sections, there's a lot more modulation that can be introduced depending on the key position or the velocity that's been used. Key position might be less useful because often with a kick drum sound you're going to be playing a single key at a time, but definitely the velocity is worth exploring to bring more dynamic control into the sound. The other advantage of using a physical modeling instrument like this is that every time you trigger a sound, there will be slight variations in the sound, lending more organic qualities to the sound. because the controls that you're using within the device are attempting to simulate an acoustic instrument and on an acoustic instrument, depending on the energy that you're putting into the instrument, the output will vary. So hopefully you found that useful. It's always interesting to be able to come up with new ways of adding excitement to kick drums and hopefully this instrument will help you somewhere along the way. So if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel to keep updated with the latest videos.